Gracias, Presidente, um, and muchas gracias, uh, profesore, uh, dentista, and studente. Uh, buenas tardes. Um, el primero, I'd like to thank um, Pedro and Juan for inviting me to speak here today. Uh, they've given me 10 minutes, so I may speak very fast. So uh, please excuse me if you don't understand, but hopefully the pictures will explain the story. Um, I arrived uh, with my wife here last Saturday, and we toured for the last week in Galicia so that I could practice how to speak Gallego and give the lecture today. So you'll be relieved to hear that I've decided to give the lecture in English. Um, but I will try my little bit of Gallego first. I just wanted to say after our tour of Galicia what a lovely place it is and how similar to uh, Irlandes our Soberinos in uh, Galicia are. Uh, you have here, we are, all, we are both Celta, Celta, Celta. You have muchas puchia. Uh, your país is verde, and your musica and culture is very, very similar. So we feel very much at home here in Galicia, although it's my first time to visit. So gracias. I want to tell you a story about a campaign in Irlanda uh, about uh, oral cancer. We decided at the beginning of this campaign to call it Cancer de Boca, mouth cancer, because we thought the public would understand this term easier than oral cancer. So in Ireland, it's called mouth cancer. And uh, as I'm sure has happened in Spain, We've seen an increase in the number of people presenting at the dental school with mouth cancer. This campaign is, wow, now I've got to stop this. How do I stop that? Uh, okay, pardon. The slides are changing when I, okay, it stopped, it's okay. To go back. This campaign was started uh, Okay, primarily by mouth cancer patients, and in particular this lady who wrote this book, uh, her name is Leah Mills, and she wrote a book about her experiences uh, as a patient with mouth cancer. Uh, it's my opinion that every dentist and every dental student should read this book because it explains what it's like for a patient to have mouth cancer. Uh, so we decided with the patients and a group of other interested parties to start a campaign to increase awareness about this disease in Ireland. And we had to engage the media, the television and the newspapers to help us do this. And it was very, very successful from that point of view. This is a photograph of a famous rugby player in Ireland and his mother who uh, had mouth cancer uh, some years ago. And then down in Cork, in the south of Ireland, we had uh, some more famous sports people to help out and uh, to publicize the event. So the first day was held in 2010 at the two dental schools in Ireland, in the south of Ireland, one in Dublin and one in Cork. And uh, this was the scene outside the dental school at eight o'clock in the morning. So the item appeared on the news on television the previous day, but we were amazed at the number of people who showed up. The, uh, the dental school offered free mouth cancer examinations, maybe five minutes for each examination on this day, and in the end, three or 4,000 people turned up in Dublin, and uh, about half that number in Cork, so it exceeded all our expectations. This was the scene in Cork at the same time, early in the morning. So the result was that we succeeded in raising awareness about this disease in the public 
and also in the dental profession. Prior to holding this day, there were um, lectures like this held around the country in Ireland so that dentists would be updated and upskilled about how to examine patients for early signs of mouth cancer. And uh, the, result, the results uh, were quite startling. In the first year, the day was held only at the two dental schools, and 3,200 people were examined and six cancers were detected. Because it was impossible for the dental schools to see so many people in one day, the following year, in 2011, general dental practitioners volunteered to participate in the, the campaign. And 70% of general dental practitioners in Ireland participated in 2011, with the result that maybe closer to 10,000 people were examined free of charge on the day. It meant that some dentists gave up part of the day, some dentists gave up the whole day to this campaign, or some dentists just gave up one hour. It didn't matter. Whatever they could afford to give us was much appreciated. Uh, and in the second year, 13 cases of cancer were detected. And then last year, uh, two can cancer cases. Now, I want to put these figures in perspective. Uh, our population is 5 million. And in Spain, it's 46 milliones. Juan, we practice this at lunchtime, 46 million. So. Our problem now is where to take this campaign because it's hard to get the media attention that you get the first time you do it and even harder than the second time. Uh, there are huge challenges ahead in regard to closer cooperation, particularly between doctors and dentists because we have dentists upskilled now but we need also to upskill doctors because a lot of patients present to the doctor rather than the dentist. So our next day is to be held in September again. We use the same day every year. It's the Wednesday closest to the 21st of September, which is the uh, autumn equinox. So uh, one happy result of this campaign has been that Ireland and Spain have been invited to join with the United Kingdom and Greece and also Italy in uh, a partnership to increase uh, awareness and also to improve uh, early detection of this disease because, you, as you will hear later, it is most, most critical that this disease is detected early. Uh, and then, of course, in Europe, there's a worrying increase in the incidence of this disease. In uh, the United Kingdom, for instance, a 33% increase uh, over a 10-year period. I don't think any other form of cancer has increased to the same extent. And significant increases in younger people, unfortunately, and also in people who don't conform to the usual pattern, younger people who don't smoke and who don't drink. So it's been projected that this disease will increase by 1% a year over the next 20 years. And this graph gives you some idea of the prevalence of the disease in the different countries in Europe. Um, Ireland is somewhere near the middle, uh, the average being, whatever, 27 per 100,000. And Spain, ahead of Ireland, uh, the only countries who have a higher incidence are Slovakia and Hungary. And in male population, the same kind of a pattern, hungry, way ahead, uh, and then the other countries following. So uh, I hope you'll agree that the campaign is a worthwhile thing. And with that in mind, we have a dedicated website with the Leonardo da Vinci Partnership, which is the first one, and then our Irish campaign, the second website address. So my dream as somebody who was involved in this from the beginning is that we have a European Mouth Cancer Awareness Day. And perhaps on the same day that we have it in Ireland, maybe next year. Uh, 
This coming September the 12th, it's European Oral Health Day, and the theme for that day is tobacco and oral health. So it would be an opportunity, perhaps, for each participating country to publicize the intention to hold this day on the following year. I don't know if it will happen, but I had the opportunity to make this presentation to the Council of European Dentists some few weeks ago, and they represent 340,000 dentists. So I don't think they'll all take part, but even if a fraction of them took part, it would be great. So I leave you with this thought, and I'd just like to say again, muchas gracias.